All right, so this is uh, the kind of precursor to my yearly vacation. It is time for my yearly trek to a remote cabin somewhere completely off the grid. I will be completely out of pocket the entire time for this, this next week. If you followed this channel for a while, you know I do this every year. There's a lot of purposes for it. It's, it's good for me in terms of my mental health and really just planning for the channel and planning out the next year. There's a lot that I think you can benefit from doing trips like this. You get off the grid, you're away from your phone, you're away from the internet and news and everything like that, and you just kind of clear your mind. You're able to decompress and to sort out just this jumbled mess of thoughts and doubts and anything else that's hampering you. If it's, you know, you might be like me and a couple of years ago, I found myself in a situation where I was dealing with some really difficult family issues and I was kind of trying to understand my place in it and just process how to function. A couple of years ago when I did this trip, I was not in a good place mentally and it helped me immensely just having that ability to step away and decompress. And I really, ever since then, it's been a yearly staple for me. I look forward to it every year because it ultimately helps me sort through a lot of stuff, whether it's me dealing with, you know, internal issues or struggles, whether it's working through bigger issues like family-related stuff, or if it's just trying to plan and process what you want to do with the upcoming year, it benefits considerably to take time away and just kind of figure things out. So this year, I'm going actually back to almost the same area I went two years ago. The trip last year was still good for me, but I didn't feel like it, I didn't feel like I got everything I needed from it. And I think that's because, I mean, there were a lot of reasons. We went to, even though the cabin was still remote, it was close enough that we were in kind of a touristy area. Once you got away from the cabin at all, there was a ton of people. You still could have some, you know, some of that noise pollution as it were. And it was freaking cold, man. We went to, um, well, where we went in Colorado last year, very cold. And it kind of made it difficult to just sit outside for extended periods of time and do that soul searching that was so beneficial to me the year before. And I was like, you know, I think I need that time in just perfect silence where the air is just so full and so, uh, you know, refueling that I can actually just sit and be for a while. Now, you might notice just kind of from my demeanor here, <laughs> Again, if you follow the channel, maybe you had the comparison the two years prior. I am not a broken down husk of a man going into this trip like I was the two years prior. Usually getting to this point is grueling for me. I'm dragging myself to the finish line just to get to this trip. I think the reason that it's different for me this year is, I mean, yeah, I'm coming off at a ridiculous grind doing the full-time job, full-time School schedule, part-time professional internship, and the whole new dad thing. Yeah, that's going to be exhausting and take a lot of work. But because I've been able to basically switch to an exclusive remote uh, work schedule and everything, class schedule now, moving forward, it's allowed me a lot of time to, you know, find just these little pockets of time here and there to do stuff I want to do. So if I want to do a prospect live stream, Guess what? I've got time. I've got time between these two meetings. Oh, look, these two meetings are 45 minutes apart. I can jump on and do something with you guys real quick because I'm not physically at work. I'm not sucked into this, you know, this situation where there's like no no opportunity to do anything and I just have to sit on that information or sit on any content I want to put out until later in the day 
or rather evening at the very least. No, I can jump on and I can do it. If I want to sit back and work on my novel a little bit, if work schedule slow, hey, guess what? It's doable now. So there's there's all kinds of things like that that really I think have allowed me to kind of manage my mental health better just because if I'm actually exploring any kind of content creation I want or even my more creative avenues, I, I think it keeps me more level. And I think that's kind of what's happened here. So even though my family's been through a lot, I've been through a lot, I feel like I'm in a better place mentally right now. I still need the trip. Don't get it twisted. I still need the trip. But I'm not completely broken mentally going into this. I think this is more about focusing and recharging creatively and trying to say, all right, what what is my roadmap in 2021 as it relates to prospect? What am I going to do personally for myself? How am I going to try and make myself better? How am I going to plan for prospect to help it take that next step and become a, a full-time gig for me eventually? You know, it's just different things like that. How am I going to manage all of this stuff? And, you know, when you think about it right now, because everything feels so discombobulated, you know, you kind of get on these different segues or even as you're saying like, well, you know, I would like to do something like this as it relates to prospect, but, you know, there's difficulties involved and I got to talk to this person and I got to schedule this with this person. And yeah, I would like to do this, but ah, that's really tough to do. Once you get out off the grid, and in my case, this remote cabin trip every year, once you're out there and you're alone, it's kind of like a different form of extended meditation. You kind of get a moment to work through the noise and the, the mess of it all and basically say to yourself, like, all right, what is it that I want? What is it that I need to focus on and do better? And it's like you sort through all that stuff. It, it's kind of like meditation. I don't know how to do meditation for shit, but you sit out there and just the peace and the quiet, you break your attachment, at least temporarily, from your phone and your computer, and you can kind of get down to the root of some much larger questions and it's it's important i do think it's important to managing your mental health to do that just like a detox if you will an electronic detox to break away from that just vicious vicious cycle and you know for me i think the big thing is i want to figure out how i can take on a pretty much every level steps forward next year personally uh professionally as it relates to prospect as it relates to things beyond prospect i've been working towards a lot of things for several years and i'm seeing more and more it coming into view now where i'm looking at it and saying if i squint i see the map now i see the road map whereas before I was kind of just like hit the ground running in a general direction and just run until I see something. And it's like, you know, it's kind of like the, the distance had I known where to go might have been the equivalent of running from this side of town to the next, but not knowing where I'm going, it's possible that I'm running a dead sprint all the way around the world, but I'll still get there. You know, that's kind of just how I've treated things is like, I'm just going to hit the ground running. I'm going to make the content I can and I'm going to try and build things up as I can. And, you know, I'll get there when I get there. Well, now I'm starting to look at it. And I'm like, kind of looking at that line, that little dot in the distance. And I'm like, oh, shit, is that it? Is that it? Like, is that maybe not like the it? But am I, am I in reasonable distance now of this next really big milestone, this next really big uh, accomplishment with this platform and with everything I've been working toward. Maybe this is a rare time where I'm more of an uh, optimistic person than usual. I think it is. I do think that I am starting to approach, uh, <laughs> not, to, not to twist my own tagline for my benefit, 
I think the line is starting to show itself now where we're talking about like, oh, so we're going from prospect to legend then. Like it's it's kind of there. And again, that sounds so like if you don't know my tagline and you don't get that that's like the bit we do or whatever the the tagline of the entire platform, you probably hear that and you're like, this dude's got 4,000 effing subscribers and he just called himself a legend. Like, yeah, yeah, I know, dude, relax. But I, I really do think that we're on the cusp of something great. I do. And I see things coming together that I couldn't see before. I just, I wanted it. I willed it, but I couldn't reasonably see it. And now I'm starting to see it. So there's a long way to go. There's a lot yet to be done, but I'm very unusually optimistic. I feel like I'm, I've learned enough now and there's always a ton to learn, but there's, I've learned enough now that I'm starting to feel a little dangerous. Just like with a podcast, feeling dangerous. I'm starting to feel dangerous with what I've learned and what I'm building. And I see how we can continue forward with it and grow it in a positive direction that allows this thing to go from just this little sports podcast thing, basically, video podcast, whatever, that I started in this rinky-dink office space in my house and am now able to eventually grow it into a much bigger, fully realized thing, perhaps a brick-and-mortar thing. All of that is still out there. It's all still in the cards and it's just a matter of managing some things and of continuing to get better and the best thing about that is i don't even feel like i've gotten close to scratching the surface of how good and how much better i can be and this channel can be that's why i'm optimistic and that's why a trip like this is important recharge refuel rejuvenate my mind, my body, my soul, my creativity, get all of that moving in a focused, planned direction. And we'll see where we can go from there. Trips like this, you know, I, I think of it as a rebuilding process, redesign, rebuild, reclaim. That's kind of how I like to view this. Learn a little bit about yourself, work through some things, and, uh, you know, manage your mental health. It, it's very easy, and I'm guilty of this, it's very easy to be in this kind of grind culture that uh, we've built up where it's this nature of, hey, man, I'm just built different. I... Pfft, I don't want any I don't want any assistance or anything. I just want to I just want to work. I just want to grind. I just want to do all this different shit that nobody else can do apparently. And I want to make it my way, the hard way. Well, cool. I mean, there's nothing wrong with grinding, obviously. Work by all means. Work hard, bust your ass. But don't think like the measure of how hard you are willing to work is greater necessarily than someone else's success. Everyone's path is different. Someone might get there busting their ass entirely, and someone might get there just because they had a lucky break. Maybe they networked with the right person, and it was more about who they knew rather than how good they actually were. Shit happens, you know? I've seen that opportunity slip by me where I've seen people move into a position or role that I wanted, and I'm looking at it like, there's not a chance in hell that person is better than me. And then there's other people who I think like, dude, this guy is great. Like, how is he not, how has he not gotten further with what he's doing? It just comes down to chance sometimes. I know you make your own luck, but that's true to a degree. But this whole grind culture thing, you know, I, I work my ass off on so many different things. 
And obviously this past semester, the full-time job, full-time school schedule and part-time internship, uh, professional internship, and just being a dad for the first time to a now six-month-old little angel has really, really broken my off switch. I cannot mentally decompress, it feels like, these days. I can't stop working. If I can't find any, like, if there's nothing for me to do work-wise, school-wise, or, you know, obviously anything, taking care of my daughter or anything like that, my mind jumps then to prospect. Great. Uh, it jumps to different projects I'm working on, like my my novel I've been writing. Uh, it jumps to, like, shit, what, what chores can I do around the house? You know, what needs to be done? I can't just sit and relax. And even if I allow myself to sit, I can't decompress. That angst that I feel not doing something at that moment, it's almost like a poison. It's almost like, I get more stressed out and anxious sitting there on the couch, even if there's nothing to be done. I can't find or work at this point the off switch. That is why a trip like this is important because I need to be able to decompress and unplug. That's just a coincidence I just picked up on as I was seeing my little picture in the screen. Uh, unplug from this mentality. And it's not like, hey, I never want to go back there. Obviously, I need to work. I need to, you know, improve and grow. But first, I need to manage my mental health or else burnout will eventually set in. The last two years going on this trip, I was burnt to a crisp going on the trip. Literally, look at this video last year. Search Dallas Prospect Cabin Retreat. The, the thumbnail is literally a snowy cabin. Hear my voice in that video and tell me I'm not borderline dead inside. <laughs> like, I'm burnt to a crisp. I'm not there in that way right now, but right now I feel like I'm, I'm exhausted, but I'm not without that little spark right now, but I need to make sure that I take care of that spark, that I help refuel it and nourish it so that it can burn bright through this next year and beyond. That's why I'm doing this trip. Help myself, understand myself, recharge, refuel, rejuvenate. I know I keep throwing all these terms out there and I'm repeating a lot of them, but it is very, very key, I think. That first night I was out there two years ago, I sat for perhaps an hour, maybe an hour and a half on that back porch in just utter perfect silence. There's not a neighbor around for miles. It's just a you know, cabin in the forest. I am alone in perfect silence and isolation. There's no noise pollution. There's no light pollution or anything like that. You see every star in the sky the air is so full and just fills your lungs. And I didn't say a word. Oh, yeah, I, I tend to talk to myself a little bit, especially as I think things through out loud. I think that's just the writer in me. Sometimes you have to hear something versus reading it to really see, like, does that sound right? Anyway, I digress. Uh, I sat out there in perfect silence for an hour, hour and a half, saying nothing. I was just alone. I had a glass of scotch with me, as I tend to, but uh, I did not, I didn't do anything, you know, I just kind of let my mind wander, and I let it untangle and sort through some stuff, and then there came a moment where I just suddenly became aware, it was like, it wasn't like a click, it just felt like my mind was this balled up knot and it just kind of like whoosh, flattened out everything untangled. And suddenly it was just this unbroken string, that train of thought, that line of focus right there. And so kind of under my breath, I was like, okay, let's start getting to some of these questions now. 
Because I knew, you know, I've said before, you'd be amazed what you could learn about yourself if you just asked the right questions. And you got to be willing to listen. So I might know the right question right now, and I might be willing to ask myself those questions. But if I'm not willing to really listen and absorb the message, then, you know, I, I, it doesn't do any good. I think you got to sort through and find that level of kind of inner peace, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Again, sounds like a meditation tie. I really wish that I could meditate and uh, get to that state of mind and feel that ease and peacefulness where I'm just, you know, I just am. I'm not trying to force anything. I'm not trying to sort through or unravel things, but whatever. You get back to that state and then you kind of ask yourself like, all right, you know, if you want to be lame like I was, and usually I would cringe at this line myself, but I was feeling it in that moment. I just was like, what do I want from the universe? Like, what, what is the thing that I want, that I want to ask for myself? What is it that I want my future to hold? Now, I just expounded on it with like four or five extra questions in an attempt to clarify it and the real meaning behind that question. But, uh, you know, once you've sorted through all that and you don't have the, the distractions and the complications and the entanglement of thoughts and short attention span going all over the place on different tangents, singing some random ass song lyrics from the 1990s or early 2000s in the back of your mind, then you can actually answer that question honestly and process it. And then you follow that thread to where it's going. And, you know, before you know it, you're like, okay, here are the things I want. Now, how do we go about it? And then rather than saying to yourself, like, how do I go about it? And you're constantly undercutting yourself saying like, like I said earlier, like the, well, yeah, but, and the, oh, I don't know, or ah, I'd have to do this. And how am I going to do that? You don't ask yourself those questions. You're willing to just hear what you have to say. And so you lay it all out, you make your plan, and you go from there. And it's, uh, it's very beneficial. You know, the, the roadmap I made for myself two years ago, I'm not going to say that I followed it to a perfect T because I didn't. You know, there are things that I outlined on there that have not come to fruition even today. Doesn't mean I'm not working towards them, it just they haven't come to fruition yet. But... A lot of what I set out for myself, a lot of which I discovered while I was there, has come together, has come to fruition, and I do feel better for it. I feel like I've, I feel like I've made big strides thanks to that trip two years ago. Not as much so last year, but still steps and steps and improvement, and that's always good. Progress of any kind is good. You want it to be more drastic when it needs to be, but you know you manage it as you can and as is uh, possible. So I want to I want to take big steps forward after this year, not like after this year as in twenty twenty two and beyond. I mean like after the trip this year, I want to take big steps forward because I already have one my flame that fire inside me is burning brighter than it ever has before. I feel that. And I need to nourish it. I need to plan and I need to nourish it. I need a roadmap and I need a course of attack. Because when I come back, shit is going to be on. To quote James, on like Donkey Kong. We are going to return from this trip and we are going to work like we've never worked before. We're going to put out new content. We're going to unveil new shows, new formats. And we're going to take that next step to go from prospect to legend. Because this shit's doable. It's so doable. Is it easy? No. But if you got that fire, if you got that resolve, if you've got all these little things that you need, then you can do it. I've got everything that was holding me back up until now. It was equipment, it was software, uh, it was generally the polish and the 
um, you know, the networking for lack of a better term, I've pretty well addressed those things. Now all that's left is just to keep doing it and start putting out as much great shit, not good shit, great shit as I can. And I will. Because I promise you, none of you have seen my best. I haven't seen my best. But I know, already know what it looks like. And I, I fully believe when the time comes, it will change the game. Maybe on a, a smaller note, what it changes for me. But it'll change the game. Uh, I, I think it'll change a lot of things. But I digress. I'm off in the wilderness. All you need to know, this whole next week, I'm out of pocket. This is more than likely my last post of the week. I know the Mavericks play the Rockets tonight. Uh, it's January 4th as I record this. I doubt I'm going to do a post-game show for that one because we leave bright and early. But uh, I, will, I will be back. I will be fresh, and I will be ready to hit the ground running. And we're going to grow the show. To Trevor and Luca... Your shirts have already hit the mail today, so you will get them. The giveaway shirts from last week's live streams are in the mail. If you want to support what we do, support the Dallas Prospect, subscribe, like the video, drop a comment, share the content. And hey, consider hitting us up on Patreon or become a member on YouTube. It's all going to blow up. And if you get in on the ground floor... You're going to get some nice, nice, nice perks. But we'll talk about all that later in the future. For now, that's my time. Uh, I already just went through the like, comment, and subscribe shit. So uh, until next time, remember, when I'm back, every legend was once a prospect. Peace.